my YouTube channel. In this video, I will share with you Form 4, Chapter 7, Graph of Motion. Let's start! Hi everyone! This video, we will go to Form 4, Chapter 7, Graph of Motion. In this chapter, we will learn about two graphs. One is Distant Time Graph, another is Speed Time Graph, okay? Before I start, let's refresh back something that you learned in Form 2, okay? In Form 2, you learn about this triangle. And you know that this represents the D, this represents the S, and this represents the T. When you want to find the speed, you will use the distance over time, okay? When you want to find the time, you will use the distance divide over the speed. When you want to find the distance, you will use the speed times time. Okay, this is what you learn when you are in Form 2. So in here, the distance time graph, so you can see distance and time. So when you find the gradient of the distance time graph, it means that it is the speed. We also can say that it is the rate of change of distance with respect to time. Let's go to example 1. In example 1, we learn how to draw a distance time graph, okay? The motion of a particle for a certain period is represented by s equals to 3t plus 2, where s is the distance in cm and t is the distance in seconds. Draw a distance graph. Uh, here should be a time, distance time graph to represent the motion of the particle for a period of 5 seconds. Okay, let's start. First, let us draw a table for your graph. Here you can put your time in second and distance in cm, okay? In second and cm. So since it want a period of 5 seconds, we will start with 0. When you start with 0, you will put your 0 into your equation. So I will show you once. 3, you put your t as 0 plus 2. So your s, your distance will be 2. So you will continue with 1, then you will get your answer as 5, continue with 2, 3, 4, until 5. Then you will get all your value, which is at 11, 14, and 17. After you get your table, then we will go and draw the graph, okay? I have already drawn the x-axis and y-axis, so now you have to label the x-axis and y-axis. So your x-axis will be the time in second and your y-axis will be your distance which is in cm then i will label my x-axis with this is 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 and i see my distance i can i will be level it with 5 10 15 and 20. now i will plot my graph okay when zero this is two 5, 8, 11, 14, and 17. After I plot my graph, then I will draw the line. This is my graph. And don't forget, everyone got name. The graph also got the name. So I will level it with S equals to 3T plus 2. Before we go to example 2, let me share with you more about the distance time graph, okay? This is one of the examples of distance time graph. You see, the gradient here is positive, okay? The gradient here is positive. And how about the gradient here? Here is zero, okay? Here is zero. And how about here? Here is also positive. What do you think you will see if this is represented by a bow? Let me draw for you, okay? Let's say here, the bow, this is the bow, okay? This is the bow. It starts from O here. Okay, when the gradient is positive, that means the ball is moving to the right. So it will be moving until here, dun, 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 until here. Okay, and it will stop at here until B. Let's say here is two seconds until the fifth second is still at there. So here also can represent as B also. Okay, then after five, the fifth second, it will continue to move. Okay, it will move to the, since the gradient is positive, it will continue move to the right. Okay, 
it will continue move to the right until C. So this is the motion of the ball. Okay, let us see another graph. Okay, you see here is the positive. That means the ball is moving to the right. And how about here? The gradient is zero. Okay, it is zero. So no gradient. The gradient is equal to zero. So the ball is stay stationary. Okay, then how about here? The gradient is negative. What does it mean? It means the ball is turning to the left. Let me show you. Okay, so here is zero and here is the P. So the ball starts from here and it will move until P. Okay, and then it will stop here until Q. Okay, and then how about here? The negative, it will move to the left. So it will move back here again. It will move back to the O again. So O is also the R. So you see, this is the difference between these two graphs. Okay, and then the last thing that you have to know is the average speed. Average speed of the whole journey. Okay, the formula for the average speed of the whole journey is total distance divided by total time. Let me show you how I calculate the average speed. Okay, the total distance. So let me draw the motion of the ball for you first. Okay, from here, zero, it will move. The gradient is positive. So the ball is moving until 10, let's say, kilometer. Okay, the ball is moved until 10 kilometer at here. Okay, 10. And then the ball continue moving, continue moving because the gradient is positive. So the ball will be turning to the left or continue to the right. Continue to the right because the gradient is positive. So it will continue until here, the distance which is 20. So what is the total distance traveled by the ball? It's 20 kilometer. Okay, let's say the time here is in hour. Okay, 20 kilometer. The average speed, the average speed is 20 km hour, 5 hour. So it's 4 km per hour. This is the average speed. Okay. Let me ask you, what is in case this is 5 here? 5 km and this is, uh, let's say it's 10 in hour. Okay. So how much is the total distance traveled by the boat? From here until here, from here until here, it already traveled for 5 km. And then it's turning back again, turning back again. So it is another 5 km. Okay, so they have got two 5 km. Here is one of the 5 km. Another 5 km. So the total distance traveled by the particle is kilometer so the average speed at here average speed at here for this graph i will calculate it as 5 plus 5 over let's say the time is 10 hours over 10 that's mean 1 kilometer per hour okay let's say here is also the 5 okay how about this the total distance by travel by the ball what is the total distance travel by the ball is 5 km if we want to calculate the average speed. Okay, 5 km over, let's say here is 10. Over 10 hours. So it will be 0 0.5 km per hour. This is the average speed. This is how we calculate the average speed. We must be alert with the total distance. Okay. Let's go to example two. This is the distance time graph. The diagram above shows the distance time graph of a particle. Find its speed in the first four seconds. It just won the first four seconds. So, which is here, okay? From zero until four. Let us draw the motion of the particle, okay? Let's say here is the zero and this is the four, okay? Then in four seconds, the ball move until 18 meter until here. Okay, the ball move until here because the gradient is positive. It's moving toward to the right. And then after that, the gradient is negative. 
that means the ball is moving back to the original position. Okay, so now it wants us to find the speed for the first four seconds. How can we find the speed? The st. We use the distance divide the time taken. So the speed will be the distance is eighteen meter divided by the first four second. Four second. That means the answer is four point five meter. Per second. Part B is speed in the last eight minutes. How much is the total distance traveled in the last eight minutes? Also the same, eighteen meter. So the speed is eighteen meter divided by the last eight second. Eight second. So the answer is the negative two point two five meter per second. Why my answer got a negative here? Because this show that my ball is moving toward to the left. So what does the negative mean? It just means that a direction. When you see a positive at here, that means the ball is moving to the right. When you see the negative at here, that means your ball is moving to the left. Yes. The average speed for the whole journey. Now we have to calculate the. Average speed. Average speed means the total distance traveled by the particle. So the particle from here until here already travel for eighty meter and travel back to the origin another eighty meter. So the total distance is eighteen plus eighteen. Or the total time taken twelve second. That means the final answer is three meter per second. Example three: The diagram above shows the distance time graph of a car. Find the duration of the time when the car is stationary. You see here, he wants us to find the time, the duration of time when the car is. So this is the period when the car is stationary. That means the duration of time, the duration of time for the car is stationary is ten minus four. That means. Six second, the car stay there, didn't move. Okay, it speed in the first four second. Okay, so the speed for the first four second. So what will it be? Here is zero, but the car start from five. So the car is at here. Okay, the car is at here, and it move to twenty meter. Okay, it move to twenty meter. So not everything we must start from. Zero. The thing can be start from five meter. Okay. So the total distance traveled by the car is twenty minus five. That's mean fifteen meter. So the speed will be fifteen meter over the four second. The answer is three point seven five meter per second. Okay. It's average speed in meter per second for the whole journey. So after the car stop at twenty meter at here, does it move again? No, it doesn't move already. Okay. So the total distance that travel by the car, how much? Is fifteen meter. So the average speed is equals to twenty meter over the total time taken, which is ten second. After that, you will get your answer as I'm sorry. Here is fifteen. Here should be fifteen. So you will get your one point five meter per second. Okay. Example four. The diagram below shows the distance time graph of an object. Its speed in the first six seconds is one point five meter per second. Now the question tell you the speed, and it want us to find the Unknown. So you have to tell yourself, how can I find the speed for the first six seconds? How can you find? You will use sixteen minus u over the time taken, which is six, which is equals to one point five. This is the part A. Okay, sixteen minus u is equals to one point five times six. You will get sixteen minus u is equals to nine. Then you will get your u is sixteen minus nine, which is equals to seven. This is how you find your unknown. Okay, the speed of the object in the last eight second. Last eight second. That means 
This is the last x second. So from 16, it moved until the origin. So what is the total distance travel at here? 16 meter. So I will write part B. My speed is equals to 16 over the last x second over x second. Okay, which is 2 meter per second. But I will add a negative at here. Why? Because the gradient is negative. That means the object is moving to the left. Okay, so let's go to part C. The average speed of the object in a 14 seconds. So the total distance, how much is the total distance? Okay, let us draw some picture. Okay, u is equals to 7. So the object will start from 7 here. Okay, it will start from 7 until 16. It will move until 16 here. Then it will move back again to the 0, which is the origin here. What is the total distance traveled by the particle? So the average speed is equals to from 7 until 16 is equals to 9 meter. Okay, 16 until the origin is 16 meter. So the total distance travel is 9 plus 16 over the total time taken 14 seconds. Then you will get your final answer as 1.79 meter per second. Now let us go to the second type of graph that you have to learn in this chapter, which is speed time graph. The gradient of the speed time graph represents as the acceleration of the object. Rate of change of speed with respect to time. Let's go to the example 5. Draw a speed time graph by constructing a speed time table to represent the v equals to 5 minus t, where v is the speed and t is the time in second for 0 until 5, in the range of 0 until 5, okay? So I will draw the table first. And this will be represent the time in second, okay? And then the speed, which is meter per second. So in the duration of 0 until 5, so I will start with 0. With the same way I show you in example 1, I will substitute the 0 into the t. 5 minus 0, which is equals to 5. So when 0, when the time is 0, my speed is 5, okay? I will continue with 1, 2, 3, 4, until 5, okay? So I will get my answer as 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 at here. Okay, now let us go to draw some graph. I will label the x-axis as the time and the y-axis as the speed. I will start with 0 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The speed also the same, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Then I will start plotting it. When the time is 0, the speed is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. After that, I will connect the point. And the last thing I want to do is level the graph, okay? V is equals to 5 minus T. I will level my graph with V is equals to 5 minus T. Another important thing that you have to know in speed time graph is the area under the graph is represented by the distance traveled by the particle, okay? Let us go to example 6. I'll collect the total distance traveled by a particle and its average speed in each of the following speed time graph. Okay, go to part A. We have to calculate the average speed and the total distance traveled. So the total distance traveled is the area under the graph. I can separate into two parts. This is the trapezium and this is the rectangle. I will calculate the total distance travel by distance travel is equals to I will calculate the area of this trapezium. You can see by here the length of here is 15 and the length of here is 10 and then the height here is 8. So the area of the trapezium I will 
1 over 2 times 10 plus 15. 10 plus 15 times the height, which is at. This is the area of the trapezium plus the area of this square, which is at until 18. The distance here is equals to 10. And then the height here is also equals to 10. So it's 10 times 10. So the total distance travel is equals to 200 meter. And then we have to calculate the average speed. The average speed, do you still remember the formula? The total distance divided by the total time taken. So it's 200 meter over 18 seconds. The answer is 11.11 .11 meter per second now let us go to the part b the same way we have to calculate the trapezium at here and the triangle so i can get the total distance traveled by the particle okay the distance travel is equals to here one over two times here is four the height here is 12 four plus 12 times the height here is 2 so this is the area of the trapezium plus the triangle 1 over 2 times the length here is 3 times the height is 12 so the total distance travel is 34 kilometer and the average speed will be 34 kilometer over 5 hour the answer will be 6.8 km per hour. Now let me show you what is the positive and negative gradient stands for in the speed time graph, okay? When the gradient is positive, that means the particle is acceleration. When the speed time graph gradient is zero, that means the particle is in uniform speed. And how about negative gradient? The particle is deceleration. That means the particle is slowing down. Let us go to example 7. Calculate the rate of change of speed by a particle in the following speed time graph. Okay, The rate of change in speed during the first 2 seconds. Okay. Rate of change of speed. Rate of change of speed is equal to 20 minus 30. The final speed minus the initial speed okay over the time taken then you will get negative 10 or 2 which is equal to negative 5 slash second when you see a negative at here that means the particle is deceleration it is slowing down okay let's go to the second part rate of change of speed is equals to from 20 for the last 4 seconds, from 20 until 30. So the final speed, which is 30 minus the initial speed over the time taken, which is 4 seconds. That means 10 over 4 is equals to 2.5 meter per second squared. The gradient is positive. That means the particle is accessorized. The speed is increasing example at calculate the value of v given the rate of change of speed or distance travel by a particle in each of the following speed time graph okay given the rate of change of speed in the last nine seconds is 1.2 meter per second square so the last nine seconds the question already tell you the rate of change is 1.2 meter per second square so you want us to find the value of v so how can we find the rate of change of speed okay we will from v change to zero we will use zero minus v the final speed minus the initial speed over the time taken 20 minus 11 which is 9 seconds okay is equals to 1.2 but i will put a negative here why I'm putting the negative here? Because the gradient is negative. Okay? It is in this threads. Okay? So 0 minus V is equal to negative 1.2 times 9. That means negative 9 is equal to negative 10.8. V is equal to 
10.8. Part B. Given the distance traveled in the last 18 seconds is 100 meters, so the question already tells you the distance traveled for the last 18 seconds is 100. So let us find the last 18 seconds. So this is the part where is the last 18 seconds. And the distance traveled is 100 meters. So how can we find the distance traveled from a speed time graph? The area under the graph. Let us find the, this uh, rectangle first. Okay, that means the, the height here is V and the length here is 14. 14 times V plus the trapezium at here. The height here is 9. The height here is V and the length here is 4. That means 1 over 2 times 9 plus V times 4 is equal to 100. Then I will start to do my calculation. I will simplify it become to 14 V plus 2 times 9 is equal to 18 plus 2 V is equal to 100. 14 plus 2 is equal to 16 V which is 100. Here is positive 18. I will move it to here become negative 18. So 16 V is equals to 82. V is equals to 5.125. This is the way how you find the unknown, okay? With the information given. The last part, given the distance traveled during the particle move with uniform speed. Okay, you see, distance travel. And the uniform speed is 40 seconds. So which is the part that it mentioned? It's here. The distance travel when it is in uniform speed. So this is very easy. The length here, 4 to 12 is 8. The length here is V. So 8 times V is equal to 40. V is 40 divided by 8. V is equal to 5. This is the last example for this chapter. Diagram show the speed time graph for the journey of a car. Find the rate of change of speed in meter per second square when t is equal to 20. So let me show you how I find my rate of change of speed. So part A, rate of change of speed is equal to final speed minus initial speed divided by the time taken. So this is the initial speed. This is the final speed when t is equals to 20. Okay, so 50 minus 0 divided by 20. The final answer is 2.5 meter per second squared. Let us go to the part B. Find the distance traveled in the first 24 seconds. Where is 24? Actually, I don't know. But I can estimate that here could be the 24, okay? So this is the distance I have traveled. So I will find the area of this trapezium. The length for here is 4. The length for here is 24. The height for the trapezium is 50. So the total distance Travel for the first 24 seconds is equals to 1 over 2 times 4 plus 24. 4 plus 24 times the height, which is 50. Then I will get my final answer as 700 meter. Okay, let's go to the part C. The total distance travel in T second is 1 to 5 or meter. Calculate the value of t. So, the total distance travel for the t here is 1, 2, 5, o meter. So, this trapezium is equals to 1, 2, 5, o meter. So, now I want to calculate my t. Now, let me show you how I calculate my length first. Okay, here is the height 50. Okay, here the length for this is t. Okay, here is t. How about here? Here is t minus 20. 
Okay, T minus 20. Now, part C, the area of the trapezium, 1 over 2 times T plus T minus 20. Okay, T plus T minus 20 times the height 50 is equals to 1, 2, 5, oh. 1, 2, 5, oh. Okay, now I will simplify this. Becomes 25. T plus T is equals to 2T minus 20 here. Okay, then here is times 25, 1, 2, 5, 4. Okay, 2T minus 20 is equals to 1, 2, 5, 4 divided by 25. 2T minus 20, I will get my answer as 50. Then 2T is equals to 50 plus 20. 2t is equals to 70. t is equals to 70 over 2. t is equals to 35. Okay, this is the way how I find my unknown. Okay, the last part. On the following axis, draw the distant time graph for the first t second for the journey of the car. So this is the way we draw from the speed time graph to distant time graph. Okay. When the time is 20, what is the distance? So we have to find the distance here. When the time is 20, this is important. Okay, so when time is 20, the area of the triangle is 1 over 2 times 20 times 50 is equals to 500. So when the time is 20, so you have to plot here. Okay, the distance travel is 500. When the time is t, the distance travel is 1, 2, 5, 0. Oh. So the time is here, 1, 2, 5, 0. Oh. Then, now you have to draw. This is the distance time graph that you will get from this speed time graph. Okay? That's all for this video. Hope you like it. Do remember, like, share and subscribe my YouTube channel. Bye!